welcome back to the channel my name is Inside A Gamer and welcome to X-Plane 11 with my tutorial series today we're going to be looking at the baby bus the Tolis A319 we're going to be looking at the cold and dark startup so in this series we're going to split it up to a few parts first part is going to be showing you a cold and dark start with the MACD uh, and a very short taxiway here at Gatwick next episode we'll be looking at takeoff at cruise and uh, then on the final episode we're going to be looking at the descent and ILS landing now, as you can see, we're in the lovely livery of my VA. If any of you would like to come join us, you are more than welcome. Uh, just look at simplyconnectva.com. Link is in the description down below, and we can get you all set up. But in the meantime, so here we go. We're at the TOLIS. Uh, let's get down to the uh, flight deck, and let's start getting set up. Now, the very first thing is we want to go to the overhead panel. You want to make sure your external power is on. You can see that the batteries are already on. Make sure the fuel pumps are on. Now, this is the state it starts in, so these all should be on, but just double check. Um... And make sure that's all good to go. What first thing you want to do is arm emergency lighting, smoking, and seatbelt signs. Make sure they're on. Uh, all the heat for the cabins are up to medium. That's great. It's already there. And we need to align the ideas first. So we're going to go to IR1 navigation. We're going to wait for the light to uh, turn off. Then we're going to go to IR2. Again, we're going to wait for the same thing the light to turn off. And again to ideas three now this can take up to about eight minutes but we can quick align this i will show you that in a second we're going to flick on our radio navigation here you can test your fire suppression for your apus and your engines nice it's all working nicely perfect okay and that is basically what we need to do up here to start with come down below first thing we need to do is brightnesses um a lot of people ask me where are the switches for this here they are make sure you turn them up uh, and you can do the same for the co-pilot side it's not so bad if you're not streaming and stuff but to say if you're doing any stuff online uh, it's very hard for them to see unless you do this okay back down to this panel uh, we're going to want to turn on the two radios down below here and again if you want to put any floodlights on here they are and again for the other screens these two knobs here as you can see, they are going to turn the brightness up with the two, and you've got the brightness tab here on the Mac Do. Now you have to do this every time, unfortunately, just the way the aircraft is set up. Over here, I have my Navigraphs description connected to this, uh, which obviously shows us where we are, uh, which is perfect. I like this for taxiing. Some people put their SIM brief here, etc. Uh, but that is a separate tutorial for another day. Uh, so I do need to bring up my SIM brief very quickly. I'm just going to drag it across. I've done nothing special. I have already done a SIM brief tutorial on the channel. And if you really want to do it, I've just put in very quickly EGKK to EGCC, which is what I'm going to use for my tutorial. Put in the Airbus, of course. Uh, we know that we're leaving 26 left and we're arriving 05 right. Uh, we have our SIDs and STARS and our waypoints and airways. This is what we need for the next stage. Okay, now the IRS for the ideas, here you go, it's got seven minutes to alignment. So if you want to have it authentic like realism, you know, by the time you kind of do your Mac do and stuff, it's, this is very close anyways, but you can quick align this. Now the next stage that we're going to want to do is very simple. You're going to click on your Mac do and pop it out. And we need to come up here to the plugins and you need to go to your TOLIS folder. And the very first thing you can do is go to your sound action joysticks and you can see Edru quick align we get rid of this this will now quick align and we're all aligned up with positioning it knows where we are now so that is how you quick align the ideas but again we need to tow this up and we're going to go into loading and performance but very first is situations uh, say if you're on a different engine you can pick a different engine winglet sharklets etc uh, that's completely up to you this is how you configure the aircraft to what you want it to do okay but what we want is loading and performance now the sim brief is going to give us a few things here that we want the block fuel our zero fuel weight, our tow weight, and if you come down here, we want your cost index. This is very important. We're going to need that as well. Uh, so this is what we're going to need. So with the fuel, we always round up to the nearest hundred. Uh, so this would be 4.6. Um, sometimes I put like 4.7 just in case I have to do a go around or something like that because I'm absolutely terrible. Um, but you know, hopefully you don't need to do that. So we now need to configure this. Okay, it says our zero fuel weight should be 570. That's what we're looking for here, which we already have. So this is perfect. This is already set up for us. Uh, but say if it started off down here, and we're on 50. So we want 570 is what we want, uh, or as close as we can to it. And that looks like about as close as we can. Uh, the fuel does need to change here, though. It is 4.6. We can quick fuel that and apply these load settings. So the plane has now been loaded. We need these figures. Okay. 
We're here at the Magdu. Now, I want to point out that I'm not a proper pilot. Uh, I play these games for fun, so, you know, don't use these in any kind of real-life situations, or I don't pretend to be that I know exactly what I'm doing. I have a way that I do this, and it works for me. There are proper ways to do this, obviously, but this will give you the basics on how to enter your flight plan. First thing we're going to do is go into the init page. To and from. Okay, so we're in EGKK for Gatwick. We need to put in our dash, because we've got a dash here. And we need to put in EGCC. And there we go. It's going to load in a few bits and pieces. Your alternative route is up to you if you want to put this in. Uh, Simbrief does give you one. EGCN is ours. So EGCN. We're going to throw that into there. That is our alternative flight number. Uh, because we're in the Simply Connect, livery is always IAG with a number. Uh, I think it's 1202 for Gatwick to Manchester. Cost index, uh, which we already picked up from the sim brief, if you remember. Our cost index day was 47. There we go, cost index of 47, and we're going to be cruising at level 310 for our cruise temperatures, which is right here. Perfect. I now go on to the next page. This is in it B, I suppose. And we need to enter our zero fuel weights while this page is here. So 5.7. Oh, sorry, 57. Uh, we won't put in any points. We could put, you know, point 0.1, I suppose, if we're rounding up. 57.1, and we've got to put in a dash here. And this is your zero fuel weight center of gravity. We have to input this, so 29.4. This is so like the aircraft knows what it needs to do. Throw that in, and then we're going to throw in a block fuel of 4.6 into our fuel. And now it's given us a load of extra bits and pieces here. And you can see that the tow weight is 61.5 if we have a look at our sim brief. Uh, 61.4, so that is very close, very good. I'm very happy with that. Next, we're going to go to the flight plan. And we're going to be looking at EGKK because that's where we're going from. We're going to be departing. And we know that we're taking the 26 left. Uh, with the 26 left, it does want us to take the LAM 2X. So we need to scroll through here. So you can use these two to scroll up and down. And we're looking for the LAM 2X, which is here. Nice, no transition, enter that into our flight plan, insert. So now if we scroll up and down, we're going to go to the last waypoint, which is LAM. Now if we look at our sim brief, that's exactly what should be there next. So we know we're happy with that. Click on LAM. Now our next one is an airway. So we're going to click on airway. If you're just going to another waypoint, uh, you just throw it in here. But because we are taking an airway, we can help bring up this page. Now you've got your airways on your left, waypoints on the right. That's how this works. So our first airway is N57. And that should take us on to the Wheelin. W E L I N. Now, if your waypoint was wrong, this would tell you at this point. So you wouldn't be able to get too far if things were going wrong. Uh, we are going on to a waypoint of 2420. And we're taking our final waypoint before our star TNT. TNT. And we're going to insert this again. We're going to scroll down. And you can see TNT there is our last waypoint before EGCC. And now we're going to click on that. And we're going to put in our arrival. We know that we're coming in at ILS 5 right. And now we need to look for our star, which is uh, the day N to A. Okay, so day and 2A has just appeared. We're not going to take any transitions with this one. Enter that into the flight plan and insert. So what I'm just going to do quickly is just make sure there's no discontinuities. There doesn't seem to be, so I think that's going to be okay. Next page is performance. Now you can see that this has changed here. You need to put your config as flaps 1F. Now most Airbuses will take off with a flaps 1 depending on uh, you know a few conditions, weight, size of runways, wind conditions, weather conditions. But generally a 1F flaps takeoff is what you'll get with an Airbus. And here we go. It's given us our V1, our rotational speeds, and our V2. And we now need to input these here. Okay, we're rotating at 150 as well. Nice. And 152 is our V2. Okay, we know we're going to be doing a flaps 1. Now we can change this so it actually auto trims as well. If we put a slash point up or down... Um, but we don't need to do that. It's fine right now. Our flex temperature today is 65. So this is how you work out your flex temp. So we're going to throw in our 65 here into our flex temperature. And for me, that is our flight plan complete. Everyone thinks that's the hardest bit. That's the easy bit. 
Okay, so we can now click on there and we can now check our flight plan if we wish. If we go up to our thing here and change this to plan, keep it at 10 nautical miles, you can already see the plan here. If we start scrolling up, you're going to see all the waypoints, make sure it all adds up. Nice round into Manchester. Again, very happy it's working. We can leave that the way it is. Now, depending on what you're doing, if you're using ATC, pilot to ATC or VATSIM, they may clear you to a certain transitional altitude before you can climb. Um, but for this sake, 31,000 is fine. We can go straight up there because we're not using any ATC as currently is. But they would give you the transitions and stuff. Uh, same for your flight plan. You wouldn't do your, your stars until if, you know, ATC said you're going in at five right only because of the flight plan that we're doing. We know that we are. That's why we've inputted it. We got our three dots here, which means everything is working well. It'll all line up with the MACDO. If there are any constraints here or speed constraints, it should do it all automatically. So we hope. Next stage would be now to start looking at getting engine started, APU burning. So we're going to come up here and click on the master switch for the APU. We're going to scroll down. And basically all we're doing now here is waiting for the APU flap open. Okay, now that the flap has become open, we're going to start our APU. At this stage as well, we can now front our beacon because the, we are going to be doing engine starts very soon. So the ground crew know that that's what we're going to be looking for. And again, you're waiting for this now to say available. Um, once it's kind of done what it needs to do here. In the meantime, we can now actually look at our better pushback. We can pre-plan our pushback now. We know that that's pretty much where we want to be going. Round to cockpit. Plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you're ready. Okay, so we're pretty much good to go with that now as well. Uh, okay, as well as that, if you are using uh, any ATC, they might give you a squawk code. Just for instance, we could clear this. Uh, we might be doing 6523. We want to set this to TA only as we're on the ground. Once we get to uh, runway, we will want to change this to TARA. There's our squawk codes. Uh, everything else is looking pretty good guys waiting for flap to be uh, for master to now become available it has we're now running on apu we can now turn on our apu bleed for the engine and we can now turn off our external power we're now running on aircraft electricity basically and that is all looking well and good we can now go to our better pushback and we can start our pushback Okay, while he's doing that, we're going to flick the engines to start ignition. And we're waiting for them now to give us our clearance. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. And obviously we are going to remove the jetway. Don't really know what this guy's up to. Okay, parking brake was released. Starting pushback and you may start engines. Okay, he's given us clearance for the engine, so we are now going to flick on engine two. And you can see now it's going to start going to work and doing what it needs to do.
And we're now going to pick on engine number one. At this stage, we can put on our flap swamp. Operation complete. Set parking brake. And we can now set parking brake for this guy. Disconnecting toes. Stand by. Okay, while that's all doing, we can now check our flight controls. We're going to check our elevators, trims, pitch, rudders, make sure it's all working. It's all working pretty good. Go to the bug panel now as well. We know that we can now turn on our runway lights and our taxi lights, and that's what we're going to be doing next. Okay, so at this stage, everything is looking pretty good for our taxi. Now, some people for APU, now I've talked to real pilots. Some say that they do it just after takeoff. Some do it now. Some say it's company policy for different times. There's no right or wrong answer as long as it's taken off before you go above 3,000 feet. What we're going to do, we're going to wait till we've lined up. So we're going to leave our APU on. So there we go, guys. Uh, that is our config now ready for taxi. We have our engines done we can put this now back to there uh, like I said we can leave the APUs on until we made our taxi etc uh, but everything else is looking good we are now ready for taxi so what we're gonna do in the next episode I will be looking at taxi from this point uh, take off uh, up to cruising altitude with autopilot features then episode 3 I'll be looking at the descent ILS or RNAV but we will be doing an ILS in this one I uh, will probably do an RNAV as a separate tutorial uh, please let me know if you guys are interested in this stuff. Like I said, it's a bit new doing the X-Plane stuff. I know there's a lot of tutorials out there. Uh, I know there's a lot of people switching over to X-Plane that have come on from the Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let me know. I can go through all the range of aircraft. I have a huge selection of aircraft on the X-Plane series. Um, so let me know what you think. So there you go, guys. That is episode number one. And hopefully I'll see you at the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.